No Exit is more than the title of the play by Jean-Paul Sartre. Here's David Pogue and company. When you Five, got not six. Oh, wow. <laughs> okay, this is unlocked. All right. Okay. What do you got? A bloody finger. Oh, uh, fingerprint. Ooh, fingerprint. Ordinarily, it takes only one oh. Sunday morning correspondent to report a story. And what number did you dial? Number. You dialed number. Dialed number. But today, we're working as a team. Hoover, Jake or Hoover, let's see. Martha Teichner, Nancy Giles, and me, plus Sunday morning intern Corey Peeler. Apparently, we're locked in a CIA office with one hour to escape before a bomb goes off. Oh my gosh, I found the bomb. And here's the crazy part. Oh, cassette tape! Yes. Woohoo! We've paid for this. Nine minutes, 55 seconds. We're playing an escape room. This one's called Clue Chase in New York City. You pay 25 or 30 bucks. You have one hour to hunt for clues and unravel a mystery. Oh, oh, oh snap. What? Oh, no. That's scary. What's it like? Is it like a video game? Is it like a board game? Is it like a movie? Is it like a play? Yes. yes. <laughs> <laughs> that doesn't help me. Husband and wife, David and Lisa Spira, have played over 700 escape rooms. And this says the clocks hold the key. Out of the estimated 8,000 around the world. We need to figure out who we're seeking out. They write reviews at their website, roomescapeartist.com. An escape room is an immersive adventure for a group of people, your family, your friends, whomever you want to play with. Maybe you're stopping the missiles from launching or you're in search of the Holy Grail. Why would anyone want to be shut into a room for an hour? It is bizarrely revolutionary in 2019 to go and do something in real life with the people that you care about. All right. And to not have a screen in, in front of you, and not doing common. something tangible. You get to pick up things and manipulate them and see if you can figure out what it does or where to put it or what it might be used for. That looks like it might go. Oh, yeah, that goes on there. here for sure. All right, let's that try it looks out. Looks like a wrench. Oh, hey, look, look. That's pretty neat. By the way, you're not actually locked in, and there's not an actual bomb. Needs my fingerprint. Oh my oh, gosh, sweet. everything's lighting up. Whoa. Oh. <laughs> oh my God, that's so cool. You're never alone either. Behind the scenes, a staff member is always watching and listening. Escape rooms started in Japan in 2007. Since they started opening in the US in 2012, they've been growing fast. They've been showing up on TV shows. This is cool. So how do we start? We have to look for the clues hidden around the room. Uh, wasn't this supposed to be a zombie? <laughs> and there was even a hit horror movie about an escape room with no escape. It's Fahrenheit 451. about immersive. Escape rooms have also been getting more elaborate. If you want proof, check out 13th Gate in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. It's like being inside a movie. Oh, my God. <laughs> my teammates this time included Tim Nicholas Tang. Beer barrels have a number from zero to seven. He's an escape room super fan who traveled all the way from Las Vegas to play 13th Gate. So remember your piece and put it on the wheels. Of course, we wouldn't want to give away any of the surprises on national television. So we're going to take some precautionary measures. What'd you think? I uh, really enjoyed it. I thought that the, uh, the was really nice. Uh, we had to do the It was very physical. Oh, I don't expect that. That's right. Yeah, it, it, and then we had to um, uh, go in the with the, the That's right, that really and ending with the animatronic yeah. That was really cool. I mean, the guy spent some real money yes. on that. That would be this guy, 13th Gate creator and owner, Dwayne Sandburn. So there was an entire shipwreck. So who built that? My crew. They're just amazing, talented guys. A lot of them came out of the movie industry, and uh, it takes a year to build one. Uh, a lot of work, a lot of research. And on a typical day, how many people come through? We run about 50 to 60 games a day. Wow. So it's, in general, it's a profitable enterprise. It's a tremendous amount of work, uh, but uh, it can certainly be profitable. It does seem like this is a business where 
you can't really have repeat customers much. That is probably the only downside to Escape Room is that after you play it, uh, there's no replayability really. Yeah. So you have to continue building new games uh, to keep audience coming back. Oh yeah, these change when you tap them. It's hard to explain the rush you get from an escape room until you've played yourself. The danger feels real. Your heart races. Where's the great monkey? And as for our crack oh, yeah. team of Sunday morning correspondents, you are. Well, we didn't win. The time ran out and the bomb went off. Oh! Oh, we lost. Oh my god. We just blew up world destruction. But you know what? We didn't care. For one hour, we'd been working our wits, having fun with friends, transported to a different time and place. That's what I call escapism.